What happened to those who tried to leave the Star Wars galaxy? Well, their fates were quite strange and disturbing. We'll be discussing all of that and more in today's video. Hey guys, this is Justin, hello and welcome to another video. We're revisiting one of my favorite topics in Star Wars and that's the strange parts of the galaxy, or in this case, the strange parts beyond the galaxy. I always liked the idea that things get more weird and mysterious the further you are away from Coruscant and the Galactic Core. The Unknown Region, of course, is full of mysteries and dangers, but beyond the Galactic Rim, there's sort of the idea that there could be anything lurking out there. That being said, Star Wars generally keeps its stories within the galaxy Proper, and we don't even really hear histories in universe of those who try to make the journey beyond. This is a really relevant conversation because right now on my podcast, Tap Calf Transmissions, we've just started the new Jedi Order. I will say, by the way, if you haven't read Star Wars Legends and you want to get into it, now is the perfect time. Tap Calf Transmissions is almost like a book club that I run. You can either read alongside us or just listen to us talk about the book. Vector Prime, book one of the NJO, was done last Thursday. We've got our next book the Thursday after this week. I'll put a link to everything down below. All right, so before we really get into things, I do have to make one quick clarification and distinction. The Star Wars galaxy has several smaller satellite galaxies, which the new Essential Guide to Warfare labels galaxies A through G. Galaxies A and B are very close to the main Star Wars galaxy, with B being only about 150,000 light years away. The other galaxies were much farther. So when I talk about extragalactic travel, I'm not counting travel to those galaxies nor the other small star systems like Camino or clusters or whatever else which were really close to the Star Wars galaxy but technically beyond the rim. All right so the basic thing that makes travel beyond the edges of the Star Wars galaxy difficult and certainly deep into intergalactic space is what's been called the hyperspace turbulence or the hyperspace barrier outside the galaxy. The new essential atlas describes this as a hyperspace tangle which strangely doesn't have a real space counterpart. I call this strange because most phenomenon which exist in hyperspace are shadows of things that exist in real space, whether moons or stars or planets or any sort of real space phenomenon. The hyperspace anomaly or the hyperspace barrier is different and there are a bunch of theories about why that may be. Either way, by the Yuzhan Vong era, it was widely understood that travel in and out of the galaxy would be very, very difficult, if not completely impossible. In fact, as we learn in Dark Tide 1, this this was a factor that caused the New Republic to respond slowly to the Yuzhan Vong's initial incursion. They didn't believe that the galaxy could be entered from the outside. Part of the reason I'm doing this video is because Vector Prime actually gives a really good description of what scientists thought about extragalactic space. This is a quote that, for whatever reason, I didn't mention in prior videos. So, here it is. Before this moment, no one had ever witnessed evidence of, let alone the actual event of, an extragalactic breach. Many scientists argued that such a breach could not even be accomplished. Certainly, several brave explorers and a couple of desperate outlaws being chased by the authorities had gone into the turbulence of the galactic rim over the last few decades, but none had ever been heard from again. Here might be the answer and the questions. So the book explains that something exists outside the galaxy, as we've discussed, that causes people to, well, not return. That actually significantly increases the lethality of the galactic barrier compared to the prior description, and also makes clear that people have tried it, but no one has returned. The character whose thoughts were intruding on in that passage is known as Danny Kui. She was a member of the Exgal Society. The Exgal Society had outposts on various worlds near the very edge of the galaxy and essentially set up listening posts to look for extragalactic signals. The discovery of what they thought to be a large rock but was in reality a Yuzhan Vong world ship was incredibly strange. They assumed that it either had anomalous properties, that it was actually a tightly packed set of gas, or that the mass had somehow passed through a strange gravitational field to allow it to bypass the barrier. In reality, what happened is the Yuzhan Vong traveled through an area of space known as Vector Prime. Vector Prime was one of perhaps several areas in the galaxy where this barrier, for some reason, did not exist. If you imagine a giant moat between the galaxy and extragalactic space, Vector Prime is sort of like a bridge. How many of these bridges were there? Did 
the Yuzhan Vong perhaps created with their gravity manipulation creatures known as Dovin Basils? It's kind of hard to say. There is also, I will say, the distinct possibility that the hyperspace anomaly is simply imagined, and I know that was once a more popular theory online, but I think some of the new more modern sources, including the Essential Atlas, have made it pretty clear that this was a real phenomenon. One thing I will note too that's I think not without a good explanation is the fact that some sources describe the barrier as only surrounding the western side of the galaxy. Some almost make a differentiation between some mythical barrier that surrounds the galaxy and also the hyperspace bramble that permeates all the way to the deep core and is primarily west of the deep core. I don't know for sure, but this is kind of how I imagine it. I've put an illustration on the screen here, which also indicates how travel to the satellite galaxies would be possible. The outbound flight was actually meant to break through this barrier and get to extra galactic space. This was a very interesting project. It was organized by Jedi Master Jorah Sabayoth. If you've read the Thrawn trilogy, you probably recognize his name. And basically the idea was that with several Jedi Masters and students, they would use the Force to simply break through and continue on their journey. The outbound flight was destroyed in the unknown regions. I think a very interesting story could have been the outbound flight or perhaps some other Jedi expedition making it outside the galaxy, being lost for hundreds or maybe even thousands of years, then coming back disturbed and warped by their time in the void with several generations of Jedi or rather dark Jedi ready to enact their revenge. In canon, there's a similar idea. Travel outside beyond the galaxy can cause insanity, madness, signals get destroyed distorted navigation largely becomes impossible and most people don't return. It's the same with legends. We don't know exactly how people die, whether they collide with something while traveling through hyperspace or simply get lost and can't find their way home, but the end result is pretty much the same. There's the legend of the Amaxine warriors in Star Wars canon, who we hear about most notably in Bloodline and Into the Dark, who purportedly left the galaxy, but more likely were simply destroyed by the Drengear. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I know I've covered this topic a couple of times in different videos, but it's one that I thought I had enough material to return to. What do you think about me revisiting old video topics? Would you prefer that I avoid it totally? Is it okay sometimes if I've got new information like today? Or just generally do you like when I revisit and update older videos? Let me know all of that and more down below. Until next time, guys, be safe. Have a good one. May the force be with you.